Hey, this is Skipen. I just got done building this computer back here for a friend of mine, so I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about something that's been on my mind for quite some time. We often hear about painters who mix their own pigments so that they can achieve a color that's more unique to their style, or possibly a musician that customizes their instrument to achieve a more idyllic sound for them. But when it comes to digital art, it seems like the tool that is at the core of the creative process can often seem like a mysterious black box to many artists using it. I think it's important for any artist to understand and know how to use their tools, and that includes being able to repair and customize them to really bring out more creative possibilities for their work. Digital art is no exception to this, and today I want to give you some reasons why I think it's important that you should also consider building your own PC for digital art. Similarly to how people feel about cars and mechanics, less tech-savvy users can often feel helpless and at the whim of a computer technician when in need of repair. And depending on what kind of repair and computer you're dealing with, it might take several days if not weeks to get your device back, and if you're a professional, that downtime will cost you a lot of money. But the thing is, a lot of the most common technical difficulties you might encounter with a computer can be easily solved by the user in a much more time-efficient and cost-efficient manner. Through the process of building your own PC, you familiarize yourself with the parts and their functions. It also gives you the confidence necessary to overcome one of the biggest fears often associated with PC repair, accidentally breaking important components. Before I built my first PC, I had only used pre-built systems for digital art, and inevitably when a problem arose, I felt ill-equipped to deal with it on my own. Even something as simple as replacing faulty RAM felt daunting, but at the same time, I knew it was too small of a problem to call a repair person or to ship the whole computer off for repair. I strongly feel that having the experience of making your own tools empowers you so that you could go forward with any kind of repair or customization you might want to do in the future. And I think this kind of rolls into my next point, which is cost effectiveness. A lot of the times different manufacturers of computers are trying to sell you on different products that you need or want. The moniker of Pro is on every kind of device you can think of out there. And especially in the art world, I feel like a lot of companies try to sell products that are more expensive than you might need for your particular art form. Computers sold to general consumers often try to satisfy a wide variety of use cases, so you might end up with one component that is overkill for your work, but another part that underperforms. Building your own PC allows you to be very cost effective by only buying the parts that are necessary for your kind of work. After doing some research, you might find that you need a powerful CPU for your creative software, but you can skimp on the graphics card. Pre-built systems and laptops tend to have components of a similar tier packaged together, so you might end up spending more money than you need to on parts that might not be fully utilized. Even when compared to a pre-built desktop system, being able to pick your own parts is going to allow you to really stick to your budget and get the most bang for your buck. And as we all know, artists aren't necessarily well known for having a ton of cash, so it's not always possible to buy the shiniest, newest tools for our trade. And that brings me to point number three, which is customization and upgrade. It can be a very good option for many artists to build kind of a base computer with just the bare minimum parts that they need to do their work and then slowly upgrade that over time and you'll find that you can build a PC that lasts you anywhere from three to five years and possibly even more depending on the kind of work that you do and how invested you are in new technology. Of course it is also possible to upgrade a pre-built computer like this but depending on the original computer and the components that you want to replace it might be more complicated than just swapping out parts. Building your own computer with the intent to upgrade or add new parts as time goes on allows you to invest in, say, a good motherboard and a good power supply to handle the next generation of components. And just like with repairs, after you've built a computer, you're going to be a lot more confident going in and swapping out video cards, adding more memory, or adding a new hard drive. If you're a digital artist that's only used pre-built systems or laptops, you know how difficult it can be when you run out of storage on your machine or in this subscription-style software market we're in now. As software gets updated, your system might feel like it's less responsive and slower. You end up feeling very trapped with the system that you have and you might feel like it's necessary to go buy something else. But if you have a system like this with the experience of building it, then it's very easy to go in there and upgrade your parts at a much cheaper rate than buying a new system. As for me, when I got started in digital art, I used several different pre-built systems and laptops, but when I started to get into photography, I thought it'd be a good move to build my own PC, and it gave me a lot more options when it came to hard drives and storage, and it also let me just focus on the components that I needed to do light photo editing and cataloging. 
and all of that experience really came in handy when I decided to pursue video. Video editing can be very intense, more so than photography, but I wasn't scared to upgrade my video card and storage and RAM and all that because I had already done it in the past. So I do really recommend this to people that have one discipline and especially those that have multiple disciplines and even people that want to start YouTube, if you build your own PC, you're going to have a lot more confidence getting in there, improving and changing components, and you're not going to have as much downtime. And also you're going to save a lot of money. So I hope I've given you some useful information and maybe put you on the path to building your own PC. It can still be a pretty scary process and a little bit expensive to get into PC building, but I think it's very much worth the effort. If it sounds interesting but you're still on the fence, I would recommend trying to buy a prepackaged system where you get components that are already vetted to be compatible and you assemble the computer yourself. Different sites like Newegg offer this deal and this is actually how I got started with PC building. The computer parts manufacturer NZXT now offers a program that seems like a safe and easy way to do your first computer build. From choosing parts to detailed instructions, and they even give you an idea of what the chosen parts should perform like. It is a product more marketed at gamers, but often the parts used for gaming can be put to great use on creative software. The previously mentioned prepackaged kits that are user assembled fall a little closer to a pre-built system in terms of cost and often start at around $1,000 US. If you're a little bit adventurous or if you're looking to save a lot of money, you could go on PC Part Picker and just start plugging in different parts and seeing if they're compatible. This opens up a lot of budget-friendly options and the possibility of a sub $1,000 build by incorporating used or older parts. For the most part, modern PC components are made in a way that makes it very difficult to make mistakes. DDR3 RAM cannot be inserted into DDR4 slots, etc. But there are still risks when it comes to building your own PC, so for first-time builders, it may be best to follow a build guide from a reputable source. Either way, it's best to do a lot of research before getting started. I also wanted to mention that pre-built systems aren't necessarily a bad option. They often have the advantage of smaller and unique cases, as well as hard-to-find components like video cards, which are difficult to source right now for custom builds. That being said, they don't give you the valuable experience and knowledge that often comes in very handy as a digital artist. The idea of building a PC might seem very scary, but honestly, it's a lot easier than you think. There are a lot of resources out there, and putting in a little bit of time and effort now learning how to build a PC will definitely come in handy down the road. And as far as my general recommendation is for the direction you should go as a digital artist trying to build a PC, I think that Micro ATX is a great platform to get started. A lot of the components like the case and motherboard tend to be cheaper. And as you can see, it's not a huge case, but it does give you some room to play around with, upgrade in the future, and manage those cables a bit. If you're going with a mini ITX system, it can be a lot more expensive and a headache, but in the end you have a smaller, nicer, compact system. And a full-size ATX can be fairly large and might be unnecessary if it's just like 2D digital art or even photography. Maybe for video you might want to look into an ATX system to have more components and hard drives, but in general for your first build I feel like the micro ATX form factor is a great place to start and it'll last you quite a long time. So that's my recommendation. I hope you liked the video. If you found it useful, give it a like, leave me a comment down below. I'm always happy to chat about technology and art. I'm Skiben and thank you so much for watching.